I will want us to look at the life of Isaac and how the life of Isaac is, is very relevant to us. Um, but uh, as I was taking shower this morning, something just dropped fresh, afresh in my spirit with regard to what I must share to you. I, I would not want to start where I thought I would start, but I would want to get somewhere to, to, to write. Do use your phones for recording. Um, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Let's uh, deal with increase. Because increase is a very crucial um, component in terms of what God adds or what God does in our lives. And there are a number of principles connected to, to increase. Increase and multiplication is different. So when you look at dimensions of increase, you will also need to work on multiplication. But we can't have multiplication unless we uh, comprehend or understand dynamics of increase. Number one, increase, for every increase, you can write that down, for every increase you will have, there is a principle connected to it. Every increase you're going to have, there is a principle connected to it. Praise the Lord. Amen. For every increase we have, there is a principle connected to it. Now, just when I thought I will quickly move, I will also add on that four things, which I, I think I shared about this last week Sunday, but not really in full. Number one, for every increase, we said there is what? A principle. For every increase, there is a principle connected to it. We'll practically look at that. I think our core focus today shall be Genesis uh, 26. But before we work on Genesis 26, um, <coughs> Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just do an intro. Number one, we said for every increase, there is what? A principle. So if you work a principle, then you get what? An increase, isn't it? Yeah. There, is, there is that level of increase that we'll look at. Uh, just under that, we can call it A. We've got a principle. The left, first line you can write, for every increase you're going to have, there is, an, there is, there is a principle. Four things that you need to know about a principle. Read for me Matthew chapter 16, verse 17. Matthew chapter 16. You all know. Jesus replied, mm. You are blessed, mm. Simon, son of John, mm -hmm. because my father in heaven. Has revealed this to, to you. Mm. You did not learn this from any human. Mm -hmm. Any human mm. Continue, verse 18. Now I say to you yes. that you are Peter, yes. which means rock. Mm. And upon this rock, upon I this will rock, build my church. That, that right there, Jesus is pointing at something. He's saying, upon this what? This yes. rock. That is pointing at something. And he says, upon this rock, what will I do? I'll build, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Let's continue. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Number one, principles are keys of the kingdom of heaven. Principles are keys of the kingdom of heaven. So what Jesus was talking about there, he was saying, I'll give you the keys, I'll give you the principles. With the principles, you'll be able to work the system and get any kind of increase you will want to have. For every increase, 
there is a principle. One thing you must know about a principle is this, is that a principle is a way of working. A principle is a way of working. So four things you need to know about a principle. Number one, <coughs> principles are connected to patterns. Those of you who did need to work will know what a pattern is, right? Praise the Lord. You didn't do need to work at school. For, 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 for you to understand principles, you must, number one, understand that principles are connected to patterns. A pattern is a process, is, is a way of doing things over and over. When you say this is a pattern, you're saying this is the plan. This is the way I want something to be done. This is, a pattern is like a plan. When you build a house, you'll have what? A, a building plan. You'll have a pattern. Okay? Now, principles are connected to patterns. Right? Don't get, don't, don't get lost. Don't get lost. I'm chasing after something. There is, number one, a pattern. So the way you do things over and over. Number two, for every pattern, there is a principle. Write that down. Pattern, principle. For every pattern... There is a principle. Don't get lost. I'll explain it. For every pattern, there is a principle. For every principle, there is a practice. Because once you know the principle, or once you know the way of working, it's not enough to know it. You've got to work that law. Principle is like a law. You've got to apply it. It's not enough to know it. When you have the key of the kingdom of heaven, you must use the key to open doors. When you have the key, you need to know how to use the key to unlock things. In other words, a pattern is, 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 is a principle is connected to a pattern. A principle is connected to a practice. So when there is a principle, we say, for example, the principle of giving. When there is a principle, that principle must be practiced. In other words, you must apply it. So when you work that principle, through a proper application, which is very important because what we must teach in our churches is we've got to unveil kingdom principles. When we unveil kingdom principles, we are unveiling the ways of God of working. Praise the Lord. Now, when we unveil the ways of God of working, the church now must not just take notes. We must then afterwards apply those principles. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, when you apply the principle of prayer, I like this example. When you apply the principle of prayer, you've got more power. When you apply the principle of giving, resources come. Give, it shall be given to you. When you pray, there's power. When you give, it's given to you. When you forgive, you are forgiven. Praise the Lord. Amen. What you do to others is done unto you. How you want others to treat you is the way you should treat them. So these are some of the kingdom principles that are in place. And we're not going to look much uh, on that. But now, when a practice has been fully mastered, we come to a place where we call it, there is a place called a product or results. Results don't just come. They come by proper application of principles. So when you apply the principles of the kingdom of heaven properly, Results come. Did, did you notice that? Amen. When you apply the principle properly, results will come. They don't just come. They come because you have worked the principle. Praise the Lord. Amen. What you sow is what you reap. That's the principle. You can't cheat that. It, it stays like that. And, and, and we, we have to master that and work that and live with that now it's different with the type of churches we are or the kind of family we are we've got two streams in our family of surviving or living praise the lord mm -hmm. and it's very critical because not everything that you're going to get in this family shall come miraculously can i repeat you're not gonna have everything you need in this life miraculously or by the way of miracles what we will do as well will sit and give you principles that when you return to your spaces, you apply those principles and results come. Whilst on the other side, there are times wherein you won't be given a principle. We'll just lay a hand on you and then results come. But not all the time. 
Are you, are you with me? Mm-hmm. Not all the what? The time. So these two streams, you must master them and know that when I'm not given a principle, I then need to come through a door of laying on of hands, prophecy, and so on and so forth, but not every day. Two critical individuals in the life of the Israelites. One, from Exodus chapter 4 to Exodus to Deuteronomy 34 verse 7, you hear of a leader called Moses who took the people out of Egypt and lived them at the age of Canaan. This man had something very powerful that he was given by God, which was a rod. Are you with me? God gave him what? A rod. He gave him a rod at Mount Horeb. And, and with that rod, every need of the Israelites was covered by that rod. Now, when you look at a rod, what it symbolizes and what it unveils, a rod reveals apostolic authority. Because when God calls me, he gives me a dimension that will cover the needs of those that are walking with me. So when they need water, we hit the rock and water comes. When they're facing the Red Sea, we point the Red Sea, it pathways, and the people walk through. Praise the Lord. So all kinds of things and all kinds of needs of the people we are leading are all going to be catered for by the grace God has given us. Very, very critical, very, very critical, very, very, very critical to understand. Because when God joins you with me, you understand that your challenges will be covered by the grace you are sitting under. Your Red Sea shall be covered by the grace you sit what? Um. Under. Now, when you face a Red Sea, then the leader points it with the rod, it opens ways, and you walk through, break through. Praise the Lord. So, number two, the breakthrough of all the people we are leading is covered by the anointing we carry. Can I say that again? The breakthrough of all the people we are leading is covered by the grace we carry. Very critical, Exodus 4 verse 20, the Lord makes it very clear to Moses that the rod that Moses had now became the rod of God. It was no longer the rod of Moses in Exodus chapter 4, it became the rod of God. Now, that same rod worked out all kinds of solutions for these people. Are you with me? What did, what did it do? It worked out all kinds of solutions for these people. Very, very important. However, comrades, however, 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 however. Very critical, very critical. Don't lose me. Very, very critical. Uh, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. I, 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 the, yes, we are given the grace. Yes, we are given the anointing to cover your needs. Praise the Lord. Amen. To cover your needs. But we are not anointed for everything. Very critical for you to understand that. Yes, the road is there to point at your Red Sea and you go through, break through, and so on. The needs of the people we lead are covered by the anointing we carry. But we do not have all the answers. Because Paul summarizes it in this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. He says that. He says that we know in part, we prophesy in part. So what I have is just a part. It's not the whole thing. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Then how do we then live in a place where these people have needs, but some of the needs are not covered by the rod we carry? Mm-hmm. How then do we live? Does, does it mean that their life must just stuck? No, their life should not stuck. Mm-hmm. What I don't have, what I don't have in my rod, God gives it to my sons. Amen. Did you get that? Amen. What I don't have in my rod, Number one, I'll give birth to sons with it. Because I'm not everything. Yes, I do have grace. Yes, Moses is having the rod, but he does not have all the answers for the Israelites. So what he does not have, God raises others who have it around him. And still, if the people around him have, have, are raised, but they still don't have everything that is needed for that house and the tribe, how does that work? It is now going to be given to the relationships we have. First, Moses, given the rod. Second, if the rod does not cover every need, sun rises. Now, when the sun rises and still the needs are not met because you've got different needs here and you need all kinds of things that are different and what I carry will not cover for everything, then I must have sons 
that are going to come into areas where I do not really have the elements of, of, of the challenges you're facing. Are you with me? If all my sons still don't have all of that, because they will not have have it all, then God will raise for us relationships. These relationships will carry dimensions and measures of what we do not have. And then it becomes very important now that whom do we bring into our meetings? We do not bring people into our meetings because we are doing them favor. We do not invite someone to come and talk to us simply because, well, this is my old-time friend. Let me let him come and talk to us. No. How do you then bring people to speak to your people? You bring in a gift that have what you don't have because you're going to pile up meetings with people who carry already what you're doing or what you're good at. So when you do your meetings now, when you do your conferences, you've got to look at what is it that the church need at this point in time and who among my sons is having that. So I don't program now you to speak simply because I feel sorry for you. Well, she has been here for six years. Let her preach. (laughs) We don't do that. Why? Because we are dealing with people's lives here. We are not trying to please each other. Mm -hmm. And we are not trying to please friends with pulpit to say, well, you are my friend. I've spoken for 20 of your conferences. Some are have one. No. You're dealing with lives here. You're dealing with... People who are, some of them are on the the verge of collapsing. And I cannot be bringing someone who is coming here just to, I'm I'm just pleasing him when my people, some of them are on the verge of collapsing. We've got to bring in graces and and mantles that carry what is going to address the needs of these people. And basically you also look at what is it that I don't have and who, who is having it and what kind of relationship do I have with them. Then you bring in those gifts and they come in and function. Praise the Lord. Did you see those levels? First is Moses. Second level, the sons. Third level, relationships. Fourth level, others in the body of Christ who might not even be our friends. But they do have elements we need and they're genuine. So we bring them in. They become a blessing to the tribe. They become a blessing to the family. Are you with me? Did you understand those four levels? We are going to live out of those four levels because you can be a Solomon. Listen to me. You can be a Solomon having the dimensions of wisdom that are far better than all kinds of wise people in your territory. But Solomon, you will still not have everything. Are you aware that Solomon wrote a letter to Hiram, the king of Tyre, to request him to give him, you know, you know the, the wood of, of Lebanon? He did not have that in Israel. And he also said this. He also said that you know that the people, the Sidonians are the masters in, in, in matters of timber. Mm. Send the Sidonians that are coming to help us to build the house of the Lord to the level that it deserves. Solomon could have said, I do have the money. I'm the richest king around. I'm the wisest king around. God talks to me face to face. God asks me whatever I, uh, you know, I want, he will give it to me. But, but still, he had to have the wisdom of writing the letter to Hiram to say, give me your best you know, you know, engineers who, are coming to, who will come in and engineer and also teach my people what we don't have. Wise people understand that they don't have everything. Amen. Are you with me? They understand that they don't have everything. And now, when we don't have everything, this is how we live. When we don't have everything, we must create rooms for those that have what we don't have to function. Are you with me, Solomon? You must create room for those that have what you don't have to come in and function. And never feel threatened. Are we we, we, we flowing? And never feel what? Threatened. Not at all. Not at all. You create rooms for those who have what you don't have to function. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. So those are some of the levels that, that will become of great value to the house and to the tribe. Now, now, now that's, that's the first thing I will, I will mention about increase. Then there, is, then there is a level of increase that happens... Um, without our effort 
There is a level of increase that happens without our effort. There is an increase that happens because we have applied the principle. Then there is an increase that happens because of God's effort. Do a study on the book of Acts. You will see that there is an increase that happened because Peter stood up and preached in the day of Pentecost. 3,000 people were born again. But you keep on hearing in the book of Acts and the Lord added a new number daily. The Lord added a new number daily. That, that increase did not happen because Peter applied the evangelical principle. It happened because the Lord by himself and by his strength added a number. So there is an increase that happens because God is aiding to us. God is aiding to you. You did not apply a principle, but the Lord is aiding. Then there is an increase that happens because you are moving. Are you, are you with me? Ezekiel 47, four levels of the river, four levels of the water. Water comes to the ankles, water comes to the knee, water comes to the waist, water comes all over the body. It became a river that I could not cross but just to swim. So this is what happened. So as much as Ezekiel started to press in and in and in, the level of the water began to increase. So if he stacks where he is, there is no increase. Praise the Lord. Amen. So those are some of the dynamics of increase that I, I just wanted to share. It, it came to me heavily this morning that I need to share to you these dynamics so that you, 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 you do not get lost. Let me quickly, very quickly, take you to the book of Psalms. 68, verse 6. <clears throat> Psalm 68, verse 6. Very quickly look at that. Is, is it dynamic or is it dimension of increase? Psalm 68, verse 6, very quickly. <clears throat> what does it say? God places the lonely in families. Uh. He sets the prisoners free and gives them joy. Uh. But he makes the rebellious listen and coached land. God sets the solitary in families. Who sets in the families? God. So there is a level of increase that happens because God has been setting, placing, you know, linking, bringing in. Without our effort, God by himself increases. Praise the Lord. Okay. I wanted just to highlight that element. An increase that happens not because you've worked a principle, an increase that happens because God by himself in his own time, by his own strength, adds. Then there is an increase that happened because of what you have spoken. Rebecca gives, uh, not Rebecca, um, Rachel gives best to, to a son, she calls him Joseph. And the meaning of the word Joseph means the Lord, he shall increase. And she said these few words, she said that the Lord shall add unto me another son. And she had another son. The son was called Benjamin, right? Mm -hmm. So Benjamin was the result of a word that the mama spoke, saying that this is not the last son I will have, but the Lord shall add unto me another son. So there is a level of increase that happens because of what you've spoken. And then there is a level of decrease that happens because of also what you've spoken. There is a level of decrease that happens because of what you've spoken. And the words we speak disqualifies us or qualifies us for certain dimensions. In 1 Kings chapter 7, the Bible says that there was hunger in Samaria. Then there was, a, there was a leader who was at the king's gate, who was at the gate, who was working at the gate. And when Elisha prophesied that tomorrow by this time there will be food in the city, the, the man said that even if the Lord can open the windows of heaven, that cannot happen. And Elisha said that you will see it, but you shall not eat of it. Tomorrow at the same time, food broke out in the city. And the people ran out to the camp of Arameans. When they were running out to the camp of Arameans, they trampled upon that man. He died right at the door. He died right at the entrance. Mm -hmm. The man yesterday spoke against the increase that was brought in today. And the prophet said that you will not eat of this increase. You will just see it, but you shall not partake of it. So there is, there is, there is, there is, there is, there is a need to be very careful with the words we say because the words we say will disqualify. Am I going too fast? Mm -hmm. Will disqualify us from certain things that God drops. 
Can I repeat? There is a level of increase that we will not partake of or eat or become part of it. Because yesterday when it was promised, we spoke against it. The man said that even if the Lord can open the windows of heaven, what prophet Elisha is saying will surely not happen. The prophet said that you will see it with your own eyes, but you will not eat. What made the man to be disqualified? He was disqualified by the utterances and the statements he said day before. Be careful of what you say before things happen. Because they can disqualify you when the things kick in. When the things start to kick in, you find that you are actually disqualified because of what you've spoken. Okay, I've given you this principle before that you will surely not benefit from what you spoke against. Number of times. Now, the man spoke against the revival of food and economy in the city. And the prophet said that with the statements you said, you are disqualified. So our words can disqualify us from increases. Our words can disqualify us from dimensions of increase. Don't speak against money. Don't speak against women. Don't speak against children. Don't speak against men. Don't speak against property. Don't speak against levels. Because if you speak against a level, you are locked out of it. Now, I'm not talking about a, a, a clarifying false dimensions. Because when you clarify a false dimension, you are actually not speaking against anything. You are just helping, you are clarifying. But I'm talking about a person who speaks against genuine things. You don't touch that level. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. Talking about levels, can, can I off-ramp just a little bit? Those of you who have worked uh, in different um, um, uh, spaces in the corporate world, every business runs on a system, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it, could be, it could either be a, a, a physical system you see or unspoken system, but every business runs on a system. It runs on a system. And, and, and literally what happens is that businesses, what they do is that they, they develop computer systems to run their operations. So there is a system that recently is it's a very powerful system. A lot of companies are using it. And it's a German system. It's called SAP, S-A-P. We all know it, right? Most of us, S-A-P. You go to the municipality, they're running on SAP. You go to government departments, they're running on SAP. Companies are running on SAP. Number of companies, they're running on this S-A-P system. It's a German system. This system, when you're doing warehousing, you're doing financials, you're doing um, uh, stock, you're doing any kind of business, this system will, will, will give you what you want. Right? Don't, don't lose the way I'm going. Don't lose. I'm talking about levels. Now, this system within it, Pastor Jacob can testify about this. This system within it, you've got people who are given roles in the system. You've got people who are given roles. You've got the system administrator who administrates the system and give you passwords and give you usernames. So you go in, you put the username, your logon details, you open the system, you function. Praise the Lord. Amen. That person is having what? He's having the key to the system. So he allocates to each one of us pin codes and so on. Then you get in the system and function. What I've learned during my corporate days is this, is that there is always someone in the system with higher level of rights in the system. And he's the one who allocate those rights. For example, you will be given a right to make payments. He will be given the right to approve those payments. Not one person is given the right to punch in payments and approve them. One captures them and another one approves them. Then there is someone on the certain level who is having rights far better than all of you. It is that person, listen to me now as I bring this, it is that person who authorizes each one of us to certain levels. So what God does, listen to me carefully, what God does in, in, in the kingdom system, he puts leaders of levels. 
He puts leaders of levels. And these leaders of levels are the ones that comes in and, and, and gives you authorization to get into the level. Now, when you offend the leader of that level, you do not get authorized to come into that level. I'll prove it to you, biblically. I'll prove it to you biblically. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy 34. Um, Deuteronomy 34. And also... Will, uh, yeah, Deuteronomy 34. Read for me Deuteronomy 34, verse 9. Deuteronomy 34, verse 9. And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom. Joshua the son of Nun was full of what? The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands on him. So the people of Israel obeyed him and did as the Lord <clears throat> had commanded Moses. Did you hear that? Mm. Let me show it to you. Moses, the Bible, when, when the Bible describes him, he says that there was no one across the face of earth who was at the level of Moses. Mm. Can I say that again? Mm. Of all the prophets on earth, there was no prophet at the level of Moses. Because this prophet was not just a prophet. He was what we call a face-to-face -face prophet, wherein God speaks to him face-to-face -face like he speaks to a friend. Miriam, and, and when the Lord dealt with Miriam, Aaron, and Moses, Miriam also was a prophet. Don't lose it. Aaron as well was a prophet. Three of them, they stood before the Lord, and the Lord said that I'm calling three of you, come at the door of the tabernacle, and he smote Miriam with leprosy, and she became white like snow. And this is what the Lord, this is the lesson that we learn in this, in the, and I know people use that to, you know, to, to threaten people and all of that. Don't do that. But the lesson that I want you to see is that you've got three prophets standing before God. Three of them are prophets in the records of eternity. Miriam is a prophet. Aaron is a prophet. Moses is a prophet. But these prophets are not at the same level. Amen. Did you hear? Amen. Three of them are prophets, but not at the same level. And the Lord said that if there is a prophet amongst you, I speak to him with dreams and visions and so on, and oracles and so on. But not so with Moses, my, my, my prophet, because I speak to him face to face like a friend speak to a friend. So in other words, there are prophets that are face to face prophets. Their level is not the same level as everybody's level. And I'm not talking about these funny prophets you see. These are not prophets. These are demonic whatever <laughs> now when you do a study on that you'll realize that there is a level that Moses was upon that even heaven listen to that even heaven acknowledges that level and 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 heaven will acknowledge it and say that to the rich man you've got five brothers that are left on earth and the rich man said go send people to speak to my brothers and the Abraham said no we're not going to send anybody from here to go and talk to your brothers they are with Moses and the prophets and when you do a study on that you realize that no but Moses is a prophet and then why would Abraham say that the people on earth are with Moses the prophet and prophets why can't he just say they are with the prophets so much generalize them no they are prophets at a certain level they are prophets at a certain level. Mm -hmm. These ones at a certain level carry keys to levels. These are the ones that lays a hand on you and authorizes you to come into certain levels. Remember, Joshua was anointed. Joshua was not, did, did not receive the anointing because Moses laid on hands on him. Mm -hmm. The scripture describes Joshua. God says that pick Joshua, the son of Nun, the man full of the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. And when you lay hands on him, I will take dimensions from you, transfer them to him. Mm -hmm. And Deuteronomy 34 says that when, 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 when Moses laid hands on Joshua, Moses was placing a key mm -hmm. in his hand, in his life, that allowed him to operate at a certain level. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, when Joshua issues a command, the people will question it. Mm -hmm. 
Yesterday, when Joshua issues a command, the people will say, well, oh, we are on the same level. <laughs> the following day, when Joshua issues a, issues a command, the Bible said that people obeyed him like they did with Moses. That was a dimension he did not receive from heaven. It's a dimension that was transferred to him by, 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 by custodians of levels. There are people anointed, but there are people anointed who, who are also custodians of levels. These are the ones that when you sit with and when they lay hands on you, they authorize you for a level and say, I'm giving you that level. Because they have it within their custody. I hope I, I'm not losing you. I, I really hope I'm not, I'm not losing anybody. And th this is the kind of things that... Hmm, let me cool down. Let me cool down. Now... You've got to understand that they are custodians of levels. Moses is a custodian of a level. He's not just a prophet that tells you, oh, uh, in two weeks' time, God is going to do one, two, three. Uh, no, we are not. That is actually a very low level in the prophetic. I'm not talking about uh, giving names because that does not even form part of what we're talking about. When, 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 these prophets give you prophets and say um, you are called by God for one, two, three, and it comes out okay, it comes out right, it's fine, it's a level. But then there is a level which you do not really, you do not really get out of your fasting. Joshua never fasted, listen to me, Joshua never fasted to have that spirit of wisdom. He never asked God to have that spirit of wisdom. But when Moses laid hands on him, there were dimensions that were imparted to him. Can, can, I, can I work on that just a bit? Can I work on that just a bit? It's very critical, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very, very critical because there are transactions that will take place tonight in this place. There are transactions that are going to take place tonight because I want us to close by applying this way in now. We lay hands on you, not for you to be healed, for you to have dimensions. Are you with me? We, not, we must not limit we must not limit impartation just to meeting of needs. Are, are you with me? Impartation must not be limited just to meeting of needs because if we are going to transact at that level, we are operating at a very low level. Moses laid hands on this man. Boom, when he laid hands on this man, this man left that meeting with, with dimensions of wisdom that he never had before. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. For Moses, the man of God, laid hands on him. Okay? Numbers 27, verse 18. Don't lose it because they are custodians of levels. Don't forget that. They are custodians of revelation. They are custodians of wealth. There are people who lay hands on you because they are custodians of wealth. Wealth gets to come to you. Numbers 27 verse 18. The Lord replies. Yes. Joshua, son of Nun, uh, who has the spirit in him. Uh, who has what? The spirit. Re replace that word spirit. If you do a study, you will see that word spirit is in capital letter S, mm -hmm. which is the Holy Spirit, which is the anointing. Take Joshua, the man who is anointed. Yeah. What happens to this anointed man? And lay your hands on him. Lay your hands on him. Okay? Yeah. Continue. Present him to Eliazar, the priest before the whole community. There are dimensions that when they lay hands on you, my version says, set him before Eliezer, the high priest. There are dimensions that when they minister to you and begin to lay hands on you, they take you from one level to the next level and set you because the, the, these custodians have the ability to set us, to plant us. 
Are you with me? In other words, let's forget about meeting of the needs. I know you've got needs that must be met. Forget about meeting of needs because there are places in God where we must set you and plant you. Did you hear me on that? There are places in God where now meeting of your needs does not become of any essence or that does not become of of any importance at that point in time because you want to be set in certain places lay, take joshua lay hands on him set him before elias at the high priest in other words you are taking him from where he is you are planting him in the next place yeah. that is very that transaction is very important that, and, and that is not given to boys. Amen? Amen. Sure. Praise the Lord. Touch your friend and say, is that, that donation is not given to boys. Amen. Boys can make all kinds of noise they want to make on Facebook. It's okay. They can make noise. It's fine. But they will never have this dimension. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Because God does not give this to his, you know, this is what we call boys of God and men of God. <laughs> it's different. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. God is even, you know, boys of God and men of God. It's okay. God does not give that to boys. Because they will play with it. They don't understand the importance of that. They will play with it. Are you with me? Yeah. So he, he takes Joshua and set him before Elias at the high priest. So these custodians of levels, they set us, you know, in places and plant us in places. Very critical transactions taking place there. Now, the next thing that happens. Okay. Verse 20. Of the same chapter. 20, Numbers 27. Mm, verse 20. Transfer some of your authority to him so the whole community of Israel will obey him. All right, stand there, stand there, right, 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 leave, leave it there. Transfer to him some of your authority. What, what did that, that say to you? Authorize him to have a certain level, some of the levels you have, authorize him to have them. Somebody said, that's not a boy's transaction. That's not for boys. I'm telling you, he say, God says, and it's a principle that you must understand because God could have just by himself take the dimensions, transfer them to, to Joshua. But God says, I'm not going to violate my way of waking. The way of waking is clear. You can only have a level when the custodian of that level has laid hands on you and authorized you in that level. And the critical thing about this is that in the level of the spirit, the spirit world knows who have it and who does not have it. Yeah. Can I repeat that? In the realm of the spirit, these boyish things we do, it will not work there because there you've got to have that authority, that level of authority to transact in that level. Because if you don't have what Joshua was being given here, you can make any kind of noise. Your voice will never have impact in that level. Can I repeat? Yes. Can I repeat? Yes. Notice that. Notice that. He, the Lord says, give him some of your what? Authority. Don't give him everything, but give him some of your what? Authority. I'll teach you another day. Why did God say some? Not all. Do a study in the New Testament. You'll see one day Moses, Elijah appeared in the Mount of Transfiguration. Jesus changes the face and Moses and Elijah arrive. And later on, Jesus says that all authority has been given to me. Give him some of your authority. In the New Testament, all authority has been given to me. I, then the Lord said that I can now give it to you as well because it has been granted to me. Okay? We'll look at that next year. Now let's look at let's look at that transaction. Let's look at that transaction. A very critical transaction is taking place here. He says, give him some of your authority. What was Moses giving to Joshua? He was giving authority is a key. 
Authority is a password. Authority is a log on detail that allows you to access certain realms in the spirit. And it is through authority that your word can be obeyed. And your word is not obeyed everywhere. Your word can only be obeyed where you have authority. Your word is not obeyed everywhere. You are not an authority everywhere. Are you with me? In fact, I'll deal with that probably today when in... Um, uh, yeah, let me deal with that. I do have the time. Let me deal with that. Let me deal with that. Let me deal with that very quickly. Let's look at that quickly. Issues of authority. You are not an authority everywhere. Praise the Lord. Amen. You are not an authority everywhere. Your voice is not obeyed everywhere. Your voice is not an authority everywhere. And you cannot be obeyed everywhere. You can only be obeyed where you have been authorized. You can only be obeyed where you have been authorized. Authority. You can only be obeyed where you have been authorized. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Jesus was teaching as the one who had authority. He had what? Authority. And when he taught like the one who had authority, he was also teaching as authority. Those are two things. Those are two dynamics that are different. When you teach with authority, and when you teach S, one is a person, one is a dimension. Did you hear? One is a dimension, one is a person. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can only have authority in a place where you are authorized to have that authority. Number two, authority is transferable. Give him some of the authority. Authority is transferable by the person who is its custodian, the steward, the manager of a level can transfer authority. You cannot have authority over a demon you entertain. You cannot have authority over a demon you entertain. If you entertain that demon in private, you can't have authority on it. You cannot have authority over a demon whose benefits you have eaten. <laughs> you can't. Some people have eaten the wages of deception. And, and they've grown their churches by the workers of deception and false prophets. Now they are trying to rebuke false prophets. You can't. You've eaten the benefits of workers of deception. Oh, yes, and I see them. I see them. They try to come and oil these and oil them. No, but when they start, their church has started out of bed. Now they're trying to come out and, and, you know, and rebuke it. You can't rebuke it because you have the way you've started. Mm -hmm. You can't have the benefits of, of a devil and then you want to rebuke that devil. You don't have authority of because you are standing on that which he has given you. Are you with me? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, it's very, very important in terms of how we start things because the way you start things will determine its longevity. Mm. If you start wrong, it's not going to last. 
Are you with me? And I know some even in this city. I know some even in this city who who, who used to you know you know bring in false prophets and lure the crowds and their churches grow very quickly and they build buildings and they had names all over and now uh, when they when they realize that you know this thing is a problem, they are starting to rebuke. You can't have authority over the devil. You have eaten the wa- the wages of deception. <laughs> Are you with me? Yeah. Authority. Somebody say authority. <laughs> Am I biting too hard? <laughs> Am I biting too hard? <laughs> you can't have authority over a demon you entertain in private. It cannot happen. It cannot happen. It cannot happen. It can't happen because you and him, you have some meetings where you know each other. <laughs> and when you're trying to rebuke, he says, ah, but me and you are one. <laughs> It cannot work. And that's why we cannot bind we cannot bind what we are in fellowship with. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I'm not hitting hard. <laughs> we can't bind what we are in fellowship with. We cannot. We cannot. You know, darkness cannot fellowship with light. And light, because when light appears, darkness must vacate. Mm-hmm. So Paul says that you cannot be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. Darkness cannot fellowship with light. So you cannot have authority over what you are in fellowship with. You you cannot. It won't work. It won't work. So 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 when we try to bind things and try to because it is authority that gives you the right to arrest, right? It is the authority that when you have been given that authority, you can arrest certain things. Now there is no way I can arrest what I'm in fellowship with. I can only negotiate with it. And there are some who are supposed to cast out devils, they're negotiating with them. We have not, ladies and gentlemen, been called to entertain devils and negotiate with them. We've been called to cast out devils and kick them out of town. Now, when you try to negotiate with it and negotiate territory with, the, with, with you know, with, with uh, whatever, you will not have the authority to bind it. Oh yes, go and check it in the Bible. Joshua had an agreement with the Jebus, not the Gibeonites. The following, the few days later, they realized that these Gibeonites have actually deceived us. They stay just around here. And they had war, these Gibeonites, against some people in Canaan. And they sent a word to Joshua that, hey, we are under attack here. And Joshua had to go. The day that Joshua stopped the sun, then the sun stopped from moving. Joshua was actually honoring a covenant he had with these people that he was supposed to kill. And the Bible says that they stay in the midst of the Israelites to this day. And when you you you, you cannot when 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 other kings come in Israel try to touch these Gibeonites, they were told you can't touch them. Because somebody has an agreement with them and, and they negotiated. And when they negotiated, they seal a deal. You can't negotiate with devils. And I want to say this clearly in your territories, in your spaces. Don't negotiate with ruling spirits in your territories. Because territories, some of them are under ruling spirits. So when you get into a territory, don't negotiate with devils. Because some of them will want to negotiate with you. Oh, ask Jehu. Jehu comes into Jezreel. When he rides into Jezreel, Jezebel looks out by the window. She adorns herself, put up the makeup, looks out by the window, and she wanted to have a chat with Jehu. And Jehu never entertained Jezebel, said, throw her down. Because some of the things we're supposed to deal with, we have actually negotiated with them and we're sharing territories with them. Yeah. And one of the reasons that causes leadership to negotiate with devils is because very quickly when they came into the territory, the first thing that greets them in the territory is what they're supposed to deal with. And then they, they, they come under its influence and somewhere the territory is taken. This is the reason why a lot of pastors in Venda are failing to make it because they've negotiated with things. 
character wise they've negotiated their character is is a negotiated character <laughs> so they cannot touch certain things because they've negotiated and they've done deals with you know certain devils and they can't have authority over this is the story of my hometown why is it that a lot of pastors in this area are failing when they started they failed to realize that they are ruling spirits in this area and when they came into the area they fall under their influence and they were under their influence and they get compromised and a principal catch up with them and say you can't touch what you have negotiated with and every time when they try to stand against it, it is uh-uh <laughs> you not That's why I have told you here last night, I said, when you enter a territory, don't gossip the believers with the people of that area. Are you, are you hearing? Because as soon as I enter into an area and start to gossip the, the people of that area with the person who is hosting me, I'm already, already, I'm already under the influence of a gossiping spirit of the territory. And I will never have influence. Because I've entertained it, and remember what happens with gossip. It, it entertains the ears. It's sweet to the ears. And, and when you know the story of somebody else, it feels good. You have eaten the wages of deception. Okay. Are you with me? And once you have eaten the wages of that deception, you cannot come now tomorrow and try to face it face to face and say, I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. You have eaten yesterday its benefits. You have heard its stories and you were being entertained by it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the things that kills our authority over things. Jesus says this on the night before he was arrested. He said that the king of, the, 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 the king of this world is coming. The prince of this world is coming. And Jesus said that he has nothing in me. Let him come. He has nothing in me. Yeah, he has nothing in me. Because you can't have authority over something that you have things in common with. Can I repeat that? Any spirit you have something in common with, you cannot have authority over. Say authority. If you take money from Simon the sorcerer, you cannot rebuke him. Yeah. Acts chapter 8. Simon the sorcerer, he came with the money. He says, Brothers, give me this power, I'll give you money. And Peter says that go and perish with your money. I see you are a man entangled in the ring of iniquity and 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 and, and wickedness. And, and if you don't repent, and Peter dealt with that man. He could have received money from Simon the sorcerer. And I can tell you, that was the day that the apostolic was going to be murdered. Because it has eaten the money that came from the proceeds of corruption. Simon the sorcerer was a very corrupt man in that city of Samaria. This man, the Bible said that he will wow everyone in that city. Don't receive every offering. Can I repeat that again? It's not, I know as pastors, sometimes we are cornered. Sometimes we are really, really cornered. And a witch will come and say, let me also partake in the building project, pastor. Now, my cement, uh, you know, uh, build that in, in Dragon Kulo Gold. From the proceeds of... <laughs> and every time you stand in that territory, we rebuke witches in this. The witch stand there and say, my cement is... <laughs> You've got to be very much discerning when you receive offerings. Because not every offering comes genuinely from God touching the hearts of the people. Some offerings want to have something in you. The, 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 the king of Sodom says to Abraham, Abraham, give me the people and keep the goods. Abraham said, I've sworn before the Lord that I shall take nothing from you except what my men have eaten. If Abraham had eaten the money from Sodom, he would have no authority over homosexuality. Yes. You've got to be very much designing. Very, very, very much designing because some of these deals you are going to be given. And, and I know some of you will be given things and you will praise the Lord. The Lord is moving, brother. The Lord is supplying. We are seeing, you know, we are seeing the hand of the Lord supplying. Part of what you are being given is both Simon, the sorcerers. 
they are coming to give you offerings from the proceeds of deception. And you will never, if you lack a heart that is in, you will receive even offerings from devils and you will come under their influence in that territory. Never rise to rebuke it. Abraham was very discerning and very wise. He said, mm -mm, this king of Sodom with his homosexuality, if I take this money, tomorrow you will say, I've made Abraham rich. Abraham said, I'm not going to take a cent from you unless you said, I've made Abraham rich. He resisted it. If it was us today, we would say, the Lord is moving. <laughs> the Lord is touching the hearts of people. The Lord is supplying. And part of what we are eating, we are eating from Simon. In fact, let me deal with the issue of eating. <laughs> let me deal with the issue of eating. Because the issue of eating, ladies and gentlemen, is very important. People are eating from all kinds of sources. There is a Nazarite vow. Do you know a Nazarite vow? Mm -hmm. A Nazarite vow or is, is, is a vow that when you are a Nazarene, in the book of Numbers, mm -hmm. the Nazarite, you are not supposed to touch the dead. Mm -hmm. The Nazarite vow, right? Mm -hmm. Consecrated. You are not supposed even to cut your hair. That's why mm -hmm. Samson never cut his hair. Mm -hmm. The Nazarite vow, right? Mm -hmm. And there are a number of things connected with the Nazarite vow that you're not supposed to drink these yeah. fermented drinks and so on. And so Samson kept that his whole life until a day he went down to Timna. Yeah. When he's going down to Timna, he's going to marry his first wife. On his way to marry the first wife, the Bible said that a young lion came roaring and it was blocking his way. Mm -hmm. And he tore that lion in pieces and killed it and passed. On his way back home, he found honey in the belly of a dead lion yeah. mm -hmm. and Samson start to pull out honey oh. from the belly of a lion that is dead which according to the Nazareth vow he is not supposed to touch mm -hmm. Samson start to eat from a dead lion mm -hmm. and he's eating sweet stuff mm -hmm. honey revelation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you do a study, you realize that actually the source of this revelation is coming from a dead and a thing which was an abomination for a Nazarite. And the Bible said that he takes that honey, he ate and gave to his parents. So sweet, they're blessed. Who passed up preaching so very good. <laughs> but they are not realizing that actually the sauce is a dead thing. <laughs> and we are eating from this kind of pots. We are eating from this kind of sauces. 